Cinema Nuke 1000. It's got faulty channel I. I'll show you that in a bit, but I'll have a go at fixing this one without using any other sort of more elaborate test equipment. And just basically with a component tester and a multimeter. Let's see if we can actually find the fault just using those. Because not everybody's got an oscilloscope, not everybody's got signal generators, um, or spectrum analyzers, or any other type of posh equipment. I have got a bit more of a posh capacitance meter there, but you know, I believe you can still do the same with this component tester. So I think we'll have a go at fixing it in a good old fashioned way of just probing the components and seeing if we can actually find the fault just by using the, the meter and our eyes basically obviously we're going to need a soldering iron uh, just, just got a basic one there and a little bit of solder a uh, desoldering tool which might come in useful uh, a pair of cutters uh, the usual just basic tools that most people should have lying around but there should be no reason why we can't diagnose this without having to plug it into some expensive equipment as regards the load on the output I've just got some old speakers down there um, I've put the proper connections on um, and the back I'll just feed it from the output from this tape player the other tools we're going to need is the circuit diagram which is available on the internet Ranger NU1000 I think this is actually the circuit diagram for 3000 but um, it suffices for our needs if you require it the data sheet for the audio drivers and also the output MOSFETs so I think we've got all the tools we need now let's get on and do the repair oh there was one other thing you can load there is an iNuke software package that comes with it which plugs into the USB port so if you want you could actually install that as well iNuke NU1000DSP it's coming with a fault on the output if I just give you a quick power up, I won't leave you on for long. Powers up OK. And on the A channel, we're getting this ring of death. And I don't know if you can hear that on one of the speakers. A loud ticking sound. I won't leave it on too long. Let's turn that off for a minute. First thing, we look for a dry joint. Uh, because I found when I was actually tapping the unit with my finger the small LEDs on here were lighting up so what I've done I've got the soldering iron out and any large components including the FETs, transistors, the coils I've just resoldered all the joints on them and that seems to have got rid of the intermittent fault but we've still got this, as they call it, the ring of death on the channel A. Normally you get it on both, but we're getting it on, on channel A on this unit. So one of the things we need to start looking at is the output FETs. These uh, are diodes, uh, which are used, I think they're acting as a bridge rectifier from the output of this. There's a couple of FETs there in the power supply. It's just a question of getting the meter out and measuring a few test point voltages. I can't really see anything on the board, such as a, you know a broken or a burnt component. The capacitors aren't bulging, but I will actually maybe look at replacing some of the caps around the switch mode power supply area. So what we're going to do is. Uh, do some voltage measurements first, find out where the rails are missing. Prior to changing any components on the board, I think I'm going to remove the front panel first and have a look at the main PCB on the back, which these rotary knobs and buttons connect to. It's simple enough to remove, there's two screws there, three underneath and two on the side, and have a couple of clips I believe. One of the main things we're going to have to do is remove these ribbon cable connections. They only pull off, so that's no problem. There's two here, one at the back there, and then on this side of the board, there's just two push on receptacles for the mains power switch. And what we'll do, we'll, we'll get that off, have a look at it, and I'll show you what the board looks like. And 
Hopefully there's nothing wrong with it. I don't think there is, but I think I'd rather just rule it out first. I mean, things like this do get a little bit of pushing and so it could be a dry joint on there, who knows? Could be as simple as that. For those of you that are interested, this is the front face control board with the USB socket on it. Not really a lot on there. It's two micro chips. The main dis LCD display, and I can't really see any dry joints or faulty components. I mean, there are no components other than two two microchips, transistor there. Same on this side, a few resistors. I'll check those over, but I can't really see a bit. There been a fault with this. Right, let's have a quick look what's under the can. Okay, we've desoldered. There's four little lugs on it. Easy enough to desolder. It looks like this is where the main microcontroller is stored away. And associated components. Uh, the circuit diagram that's available on the internet isn't correct for the, my version. The diodes here are the incorrect part number. The main output FETs are the wrong part number. I'm not sure about anything else, I haven't really checked anything else, but according to the circuit diagram the main output FET should be this IRFS4227 but in this unit they're actually IFR BN 23 N 15 Ds which are no longer available so th that might be an alternative to fit which well I, mean, I haven't got a choice really if they're faulty you can't get the original part the other thing I found is that the actual diodes in the power supply which are these which are part number MURB1620CTs which are dual diodes in a package and there's four of those aren't actually that on my board they're actually these STTH802s and it's this package here I'll just zoom into that a little bit it's this package here where the diode, where you can test between the anode and the cathode uh, but one of the pins is not connected so I'm presuming there's only a single diode in these uh, as shown by the diagram at the top I originally thought I had an issue with them so I lifted the legs and tested them but then I reading the part number designation it's a different part so I effectively lifted all of the legs on these chips, these four, and just tested each one manually. And they're testing our okay. case, and then I think I'll have a look at uh, what voltages I'm getting there because according to the circuit diagram, I should be getting 78 volts and minus 78 volts. So let's see what we're actually getting. I've done some voltage checks, and the voltages seem to be okay. There are 15.2 volts for the places where I've measured on this piece of the board and down there it was again 15.2 volts. On this part of the board a little bit of an anomaly with this one where it should be 18 volts I've got roughly 20 volts I'm going to have to check the data sheets and 20 volts again and, but I'm getting minus 50 on there and where it's 15 is 15.2 as we said before so those supply rails seem to be working okay but the the main one that's giving me grief is this one uh, it's the output from them four diodes and it should be minus 78 and plus 78 and um, we're getting 15 volts on the top part of the circuit there it, roughly 15 volts, Zener there we've got 14.8 which is probably within tolerance 
but it's the concern is the voltages are totally incorrect for there so I think I'm gonna have to have a look at the the FETs and just see, see whether they are actually dragging the supply rail down just a quick test I've desoldered the legs on this FET and I brought it up to my little meter if I give the button a little press it's only seen the forward diode uh, that is between the drain and the source so it's not actually seeing a FET at all um, which they all read the same which sort of would have implied that they've gone open which is a little unusual for FETs but you never know I've done a basic test with the meter connecting the lead to the source and the drain removing the drain, charging the gate and hoping it would then conduct as a switch and there's nothing so it sort of, it sort of is implying that the fault is on the gate so um, we're going to change them I can't actually get this actual component anymore, it's no longer available it's not as per the original circuit diagram well, I've taken the output FETs off uh, ready for replacement um, now I did notice while I was hunting around the board there that there is a capacitor just here which is C value C69 uh, which I can show you here it's got some cracks in the back of it so I've tested it on the LCR meter and it's coming out as 2.169 ohms which for a capacitor I don't think is quite right <laughs> uh, and I can probably see now where the power supply was being pulled down uh, because it's right there on the input from the 78 volts and if that's got two ohms across it no wonder the power supply was being clipped so I think what we're going to do Yes, I've ordered new transistors anyway, or FETs, so I'm going to drop those in. I'll replace that cap. I'll test these other caps around here, just to make sure they're okay. Um, but I'm starting to think that that could have been the whole problem. Yeah, we'll see. I'll just test C69 on this multifunction tester as well. Uh, same again, it sees it as a resistor. The new transistors arrived, so let's give it a test in comparison to the old ones. And that seems to be testing for me. I'll just put one of the old ones on to show the difference. This is the old transistor removed uh, when we do the test. It basically sees it as a diode and that's it. So we'll get this put back together and hopefully it should work. I've changed the cap on the board. I've checked some of the other caps and I can't see any problems with those so I think we can take the risk, put these uh, FETs back on, MOSFETs and see what happens. Well we've still got the fault on channel A change the two output MOSFETs I don't know why I mean they're kind of open not short but obviously we found that this capacitor was faulty which is part of the supply rail for these FETs it was short circuit it's really about two ohms if I remember right so I think the next thing I'm going to do is change this driver this MOSFET driver it looks more than likely that's going to be if these went faulty, it's either this created the fault, that capacitor blown capacitor bl created the fault, and there's either taken these out, but a little bit perplexed why these are going to open, but um, they do sometimes apparently. Um, most FETs I've ever tested generally go short. But I'm going to change this chip, so I'm going to mask off this area, uh, desolder this chip, drop a new one in, and see if that remedies the problem 
Well, I've decided to replace both chips. I've messed off the area. It's probably overkill this, but there's a lot of plastic uh, trimmers and stuff around this area. I don't want to damage them. We're going to put a bit of flux on them, and the choice of tool is going to be the hot air gun. Um, I'm not going to show up doing this because I need both hands to do it and I don't want to damage this board but you get the idea basically, heat the chip up well put a bit of flux on, heat the chip up, take the chip off, clean the pads up and put the new chip back on um, I've replaced both the chips here and here uh, which are IRS 20957's I originally, I think the originals were 5 fives, but um, I put it all back together. Uh, first thing to do, I think now, is to power it up and see what we get. So it's first time for me, first time for you. If it goes bang, my arm is covering me. So let's have a look. We have power, we have fan, and we no longer have the doom of death or ring of death, as they, as they call it on this channel, channel 9. And channel B. Next thing to do I suppose is to plug some speakers in, plug an input signal and monitor the output and see what we've got and then we'll soak test it for a little bit. But it does seem that the IRS 2095 uh, in conjunction with the MOSFETs and that capacitor seem to be the fault with this amplifier. Now channel B I can't say it was working correctly because I couldn't test it uh, due to this ring of death on this side being intermittent and flashing um, but we'll give it a go and see what see what happens well, seems to be working out okay um, I've installed the iNuke program as you can see each of the channels I'll bring up there we're bringing those up no problem whatsoever okay let's summarize the, what we did for the repair I think this was the main culprit. It's one mark for a capacitor. That blue went short. All four of these MOSFETs, for some reason, went open, uh, which is unusual for a MOSFET. They're IRFB 23Ns 15Ds. And I think in whatever happened to these, pulled out one of these two MOSFET drivers which are the IRS 20957 now, I think only one of these have been pulled out but I've changed both because I've, I've, there were two for, there were two um, nine double fives and I think I've upgraded them to 20957s uh, there is a data sheet telling you that you need to check some voltages before you do it um, this unit seemed okay so I've just left that Excuse my grubby fingernails. 